16-year-old driver was killed this weekend when his pickup truck plunged 25 feet through a hole torn in a small wooden bridge in Tennessee. Police say they're not sure if the weight of the truck caused the bridge to collapse or if it was already down when the driver approached. That bridge runs over a railroad track along a country road near Oliver Springs. The accident comes exactly two weeks after another bridge collapsed north of Memphis killed eight people. Police say the teenager only had his license for one week. He would have been 17 on Tuesday. The Federal Aviation Administration may bring criminal charges against professional pilots who lie about alcohol and drug convictions when they apply for their jobs. According to published reports, the investigation is part of a two-year effort to keep substance abuse out of the cockpit. The FAA also has issued new airline safety rules. Uh, these rules govern maintenance of commercial jetliners. Now, all the parts that are endured, uh, that have to endure the most stress will have to be replaced on a very regular basis. We have more in this report. When the roof of this 18-year-old Aloha Airlines jetliner peeled off in flight over the Pacific last April, many aviation experts felt it was a dramatic testament not only to the plane's age, but to the FAA's antiquated system of airline inspections. Now, instead of increasing the number of inspections as an aircraft gets older, the FAA is going to require parts be replaced when they reach a certain age, regardless of their condition. We will be requiring replacement, rather than inspection, of the weakest parts in the aircraft, those that we expect to crack first. Uh, and that is going to continue for the rest of time in the FAA and for all aircraft. The new rules call for replacement of certain rivets on older Boeing 737s like the Aloha airliner. Later this summer, the airlines will have to make 160 additional changes to all older Boeing jets, this time including 727s and 747s. Recommendations for older McDonnell Douglas and foreign airplanes are expected later this summer. The FAA and even some safety experts dispute the need for major overhauls, saying they're uneconomical and unnecessary as long as engine parts are replaced systematically over the years. Eugenia Halsey for CNN, Washington. The election for mayor of Los Angeles is over for another four years, but a new poll indicates that Tom Bradley might not have won a clear-cut victory in the primary if the candidates had been stacked differently. According to a survey by the Los Angeles Times, Bradley would have faced a runoff election if Councilman Zev Yerzlovsky had remained in the race for mayor. As it turned out, Yerzlovsky was not in the race, he dropped out, and Bradley won 52% of the vote for re-election. Southern California depositors have withdrawn $60 million from Lincoln Savings and Loan since it was seized on Friday by federal regulators. The heavy activity began after bankruptcy plans were announced by the Savings and Loan's parent company, American Continental. But officials say Lincoln Savings is not part of the bankruptcy sought by American Continental, and the customer's money is safe. According to late reports, anyone who withdrew a certificate of deposit and was penalized for early withdrawal can return the deposit and have the full value restored. In other news, in West Hollywood, cyclists geared up today for the second annual AIDS Cycle Challenge. The fundraiser benefits 16 different aid service organizations locally. As Marta Waller reports, organizers hope to raise a quarter of a million dollars from today's event. Bending, stretching, warming up, getting ready for the second annual AIDS Cycle Challenge. 60 miles of riding on L.A. streets to raise money for AIDS service organizations. The ride attracted many celebrities. Mostly we have a great deal of prostitutes, uh, teenagers that are on the street uh, that are HIV positive and they have no way to quit because they have no means of support. I thought it sounded like a lot of fun and, um, and it, I think it's really important that it raises money for different organizations, not just one and for a lot of different things. So that's why I'm here and, and just to be with friends. Stationary bicycle riders also raised money, and the riders had pledges from a few dollars per kilometer to several thousand for the entire ride. For most riders, this is a great opportunity to be with friends and show support for an important cause. It has particularly affected the community in which I live, and I think that we can only do so much, and when I can participate, I want to be out here and being a part of it all. The Eight Cycle Challenge is Los Angeles' primary spring fundraising event, and the cyclists will ride distances varying from 15 to 60 miles for the cause. 500 riders participated in last year's first annual AIDS Cycle Challenge, and $60,000 was raised. 
This year, there are a thousand riders, and organizers say they hope to raise $250,000 to benefit 16 different organizations dedicated to helping people with AIDS. In West Hollywood, Marta Waller, Channel 5, News at 10. A powerful earthquake has rumbled through China. We'll have late details on that deadly quake coming up next here on News at 10. And also just ahead, violent clashes in the Israeli-occupied territories mark a bloody anniversary in that area. And a member of the British royal family pays a special visit to Moscow. Details on these stories and all the late news when we continue. A powerful earthquake destroyed 30 homes in a remote village in southwest China early today. At least four people were killed and five injured. The quake, which measured 6.7 on the Richter scale, struck at 534 this morning near China's western border with Tibet. Over the next seven hours, more than 1,000 aftershocks were reported. Rescue teams are en route to the epicenter area tonight. In the Philippines, communist rebels have offered President Corazon Aquino a ceasefire if she will close American military bases in her country. In a statement released today, the rebels accused the United States of using the bases to wage war in the Pacific. They said peace talks can begin if the Aquino government closes the bases by 1991. The United States maintains Clark Air Force Base, Subic Bay Naval Base, and four smaller facilities in the Philippines. In the West Bank, Israeli soldiers shot and killed three Palestinians today, including a 10-year-old boy. All this during demonstrations marking the one-year anniversary of the assassination of PLO chief Khalil Wazir. Violent clashes erupted after the army imposed a curfew over most of the occupied territories aimed at preventing such outbursts. The young boy was the first to be killed when he was shot by soldiers attempting to disperse memorial marchers. News of the boy's death triggered increased fighting in surrounding villages. In Uruguay, rain is being blamed for low voter turnout on a referendum of a law giving amnesty to security forces accused of brutality during the last regime. The 1986 law gave amnesty to scores of police and soldiers accused of murder and torture in a military campaign against leftist guerrillas. If voters reject the amnesty, the Supreme Court would then vote on its legality. About 150 people were killed and another 200 arrested and never seen again during that crackdown. Thousands of residents in the West German town of Rotenburg were evacuated today. A 22-car train carrying toxic chemicals jumped the tracks last night. Authorities say the evacuation was just a precaution, and none of the poisonous or explosive freight leaked. Haze for the first time in a while, but the low clouds will return to the coast tonight and move inland by morning. Those clouds are already moving in. On the satellite map, you can see the cloud cover off the coast. That's part of an upper-level low that could bring showers into northern California by tomorrow night. None of that will make its way here. On the national map, looks like showers and thunderstorms will dominate the Great Lakes region, Ohio Valley, and Mississippi Valley. Showers are also expected in Florida, and high winds will whip up the southern plain states. And how's this for a current temperature reading at the L.A. Civic Center? 61 degrees at this hour, humidity 78%, barometer is rising slightly, and we have southerly winds at 7 miles per hour. The high today was a cool 68 degrees, this after an overnight low of 59. Tomorrow's weather in the valley looks like this. More hazy sunshine after more low, foggy clouds. The highs will warm up to the mid to low 70s. Along the coast, the low clouds will hang around in the morning, then clear up to hazy sunshine by afternoon to a high in the mid-60s. In the higher elevations, mostly clear skies are on tap with highs at the resorts in the 70s. And for the deserts, warm and breezy conditions are expected tomorrow. Highs there will range between the 80s and 90s. And here are some high and low temperatures to give you an idea of what it will be like tomorrow in other parts. Can't ask for better weather, actually. And the weekday outlook is calling for little change and continued mild weather for the Southland. Tonight's slide is a sunset near Lake Matthew. Our thanks to Doug and Diana Romaley of Paris, California. And if you'd like to send us a copy of your favorite slide, mail it to KTLA, P.O. Box 500, Los Angeles, 90078. And it looks like fairly good weather ahead. Make the most of it, Larry. Okay, Minerva. You know, I guess if there's anything that's indicative of our modern times, it would be the computer. Would you agree? Mm. Everywhere you Absolutely. look now. Everywhere, computers are playing a major role. And we have to tell you, the United States Coast Guard is no exception. The move to high-tech has meant an increase in responsibilities for our seagoing sentries. During one patrol off Florida, the Coast Guard cutter Bear was involved in pursuit of a hijacked ship, stopped and searched several boats for drugs, picked up Haitian boat people, and was on station during the launch of the shuttle Discovery. To perform these duties, almost everything on board is wired to a computer. The heart and soul here is not the engine room, but the mainframe. 
Some of our uh, people on board call this system the leech because it is sucking information from almost every sensor on the ship. The computer gives an hourly printout of engine, pump, and generator conditions. This computerized cutter is one of the first of a new generation vessel joining the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard spends a good deal of its time locating and intercepting other vessels. So the Bears computer is devoted primarily to navigation and tracking. Paper charts are converted electronically to a data tape and entered into the computer's memory. That information, along with the radar signal and navigational data, go from here to the ship's command center. Some of the men on board say all this sophistication has taken some of the challenge out of the chase. But before this new generation of computerized cutters, hunting down another vessel in thousands of square miles of ocean was like finding a needle in a haystack. John Zarella, CNN, Miami. Just ahead tonight, four lucky ticket holders will share the world's largest lottery jackpot. We'll tell you about that and let you know about the winners in our own state lotto game here in California. The world pays tribute to the great Charlie Chaplin on what would have been his 100th birthday. That's coming up, too. And the streets of Long Beach are alive with the sounds of that city's annual Grand Prix. We'll put you right on track when News at 10 comes right back. This late word to News at 10, authorities in Mexico today discovered two more victims of a satanic murder ritual. The bodies were found buried near a farm where 13 other bodies were uncovered last week. Investigators say they have evidence that the two newly discovered male victims were killed by the same drug smuggling cult members believed responsible for the other murders. Police in Mexico and the United States are looking for the man believed to have been the ringleader of that cult. The Internal Revenue Service says millions of Americans are waiting until the last possible moment to file their 1988 income tax returns. And the IRS is promising to keep its walk-in offices open tomorrow until every taxpayer with a question is helped. Late filers have been given an extra two days to complete their returns because the April 15th deadline fell on Saturday this year. And taxpayers in New England are being granted yet another day. Tomorrow is Patriot's Day out there, a legal holiday, and the IRS Processing Center in that region will be closed. We should have all moved to New England. And four lucky players will share the nation's biggest lottery prize, a record $68 million in the Illinois State Lottery. Lottery officials say the winners will be announced as they come forward to claim their prizes. Each winner will receive about $17.5 million over the next 20 years. How about that? And two players of the California Lotto have reason to celebrate tonight as well, even though their lotto prize isn't that big. The lucky millionaires will split a jackpot of almost $13.5 million. The winning tickets were purchased in Huntington Beach and Alameda. Remember that when we'll we okay. hear about those two guys tomorrow. That's right. Minerva today would have been the 100th birthday of movie-making genius Charlie Chaplin. The English-born comedian spent the last 25 years of his life in Switzerland, and the people of that country turned out in force today. Here's a little bit of what the festival looked and sounded like. <laughs> Thousands of people took part in the celebration, which included screenings of Chaplin's films, concerts featuring music, which he composed, and an exhibition of photographs illustrating his career. There also were more serious tributes to the comedian, and a park was dedicated in his name. It was a big day in Long Beach for auto racing fans. More than 100,000 people turned out for the annual Toyota Grand Prix. Some serious fans came out to watch the race. Others, well, they just came out to have a good time. Marta Walla reports. Inside the Grand Prix area, the roar of race cars is nearly deafening, but no one seems to mind. They're all out to have fun. I'm having a great time. How about yourself? Yeah, I'm great time. So much fun, huh? Blast. <laughs> you gotta wait and see the race. <laughs> and what's a big event without souvenirs? Get a program today, folks. Get a program. Get the Grand Prix program. Everything from $20 watches, goodies for the car, even $400 leather jackets with the Grand Prix logo embroidered on the back. The spectators arrived in cars, on foot, and in RVs, hundreds of them, all the occupants taking their partying very seriously. Are you having a good time? Extremely. What's the best part? Uh, I'd say the uh, women and the fast cars. Why? Auto racing is great. I'm an auto racing fan. I'm here with a lot of my friends. Now the pit suites catered to a more elite group with gourmet food and open bar and the best possible view of the race. And what a race. 
even little kids for whom driving any car is a decade away were having a great time. It's fun to watch the cars go by and to see who's going to win. You mind the noise? No. You've heard of having pizza delivered? Well, Domino's wasn't kidding. They delivered the whole kitchen. Just another Sunday afternoon in Long Beach. Thousands of people eating, drinking, partying, and having a good time. In Long Beach, Marta Waller, Channel 5, News at 10. But the driver to really be careful of out there today was Marta Waller. Yes. <laughs> Hey, by the way, on the crowd estimates, it, it varied so much. I, I made a couple of calls today. We're just we're saying over 100,000, but one policeman I talked to in Long Beach who was there said uh, he thought it was over 200,000. That included not only inside the race course, but all around, all around the, the area. The yeah, yeah. Said it was Sunday night sports. Here's that Arnold. He's got it all. Well, the Long Beach Grand Prix had a repeat winner today, but it took a tangle with another former champ to make it happen. We'll show you what happened on the Sunday sports page. The Lakers, Angels, and Dodgers also played us. We have highlights. And in our golf coverage, we'll take you to Rancho Park, among other places. But page one is headlined by how the Lakers fared against the lowly heat on Kareem's birthday. And for the second straight game, the Angels' bats produce the well, at back some excellent pitching. That and more on page one, which follows. Coming off a surprise loss at the sports arena last night to the Clippers, the Lakers were looking for some revenge, and to their fortune, they hosted the Miami Heat tonight. Despite the loss of a night ago, the Forum faithful still came out in force. I'm sure they didn't like what they saw at first. Former Laker Billy Thompson put the Heat up 25-22. Miami went 9-for-9 nine nine early, but Miami should have known they were doomed. Happy 42nd birthday, big fella. Kareem scored 10 points in the first half, and the Lakers led by 14 at the intermission. He finished with 12. Miami outscored the defending champs by nine in the third quarter. Byron Scott and his dunking show kept the Lakers where they belonged on top. Magic Johnson, minus the goatee, led the defending champs with 24 points. He added seven assists and seven rebounds. Kevin Edwards led Miami in all scores with 27 points. The Lakers now lead Phoenix by one game. Denver will be at the Forum on Tuesday. And ever since Michael Jordan switched to point guard almost three weeks ago, he's been practically unstoppable for him. Triple-doubles have been routine while the Chicago Bulls fight for a playoff position. Jordan took his act to Cleveland today, where yesterday fans came out and drove just for playoff tickets. Jordan got off to his usual amazing self, the Bulls trying to beat the Cavaliers for the first time in five games this season. Jordan showed he's not just a scorer. He fed Charles Davis for two. The Bulls trailed by a point. The Cleveland does have the second-best record in the league. Mark Price to Larry Nance for the lay-in. Nance led the Cavs with 26. Cleveland was just too much for the Bulls. Price and Ron Harper put on the final touch. And the win. Jordan scored only 22 points, but didn't play the fourth quarter. He had just three rebounds and three assists. The Rockets won in overtime. Wins for the 76ers and Pistons. That's 18 straight for Detroit at home. And Ricky Pierce led the Bucks to victory with 22. We move to the baseball diamond where the Angels and Mariners squared off at the Seattle Kingdom in the rubber game of their three-game series. The Angels wasted little time getting to Mariners starter Mike Campbell. Claudel Washington's bases loaded single made it 1-0 in the first inning. In the... We'll take a short break before turning to page two where you'll see how two former winners collided with a veteran driver not so forgiving. Mario Andretti came out on the short end of an incident in the Long Beach Grand Prix with Alan Hunter Jr. It's the second time it's happened now in six months. Details next. score was right, I think I gave it wrong. Montreal beat Pittsburgh 5-4. That was in 11 innings. When Chris Pook and his group began the Long Beach Grand Prix in 1974, I don't even think they dreamed the event would become such a happening. But today's 15th Toyota Grand Prix of Long Beach attracted not only the best kart IndyCar drivers, but a huge crowd exceeding 100,000. 28 cars challenged the 1.67 mile 11 turn layout, all in pursuit of the posted purse exceeding $800,000. There were only seven lead changes among three drivers. Former winner Mario Andretti passed son Michael, also a former winner. Michael returned the favor later. Pole setter Al Lunser Jr. took advantage of an Andretti pit stop to retake the lead and showed viewers his look at the classic seaside road circuit. 95 laps for a total of 158.65 miles. Al Lunser Jr., who ended the Andretti domination of this race last year, took out Mario Andretti on the 84th lap. His car bumped Mario's in heavy traffic entering turn three. Andretti appeared to swing wide through the turn behind a slower car, then slid back across Unser's line, making contact. 
Mario was furious and finished 18th since he happened to be through for the day. Al Jr. held off Michael Andretti to repeat his champ, winning by 12 and 8,300 seconds, with Emerson Fittipaldi third, Bobby Ray Hall fourth, and Rick Mears fifth. As for Mario, he hitched a ride to the pits with his son Michael. Not a happy camper since a similar bump with Al Unser Jr. in the Miami race last season also put Mario out of that race. Unser picked up $117,660 for the win, averaging 85.330 miles per hour, which broke Mario's Long Beach record set in 1987. The stock cars were busy at North Wilkesboro, North Carolina, in the first Union 400 NASCAR Winston Cup race. Dale Earnhardt led five times for 296 laps, en route to ending a 15-race winless streak. He retook the lead from Darrell Waltrip but only had one serious challenge the rest of the way. Why was Michael Waltrip taking a stroll rather than driving? Because this had just happened, causing one of 10 caution flags for 50 laps. The one serious challenge Earnhardt had was when from Alan Kulwicki, but Kulwicki lost his brakes with three laps to go during a bumper-to-bumper -bumper duel, and Earnhardt simply pulled away for the victory. Kulwicki was second, Mark Martin third. From autos to horses for the $150,000 Santa Anita Budweiser Breeders' Cup for fillies and mares, three-year-old and up and watch the riding of Chris McCarran aboard the one horse, Claire Marine. Here comes Claire Marine in the pink cap, now going best of all. And Claire Marine and Chris McCarran hit the front and start to draw clear. Claire Marine drawing off to win it easy. In case you've been asleep for the last 24 hours, the L.A. Kings are headed into the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. They'll face the Flames in Calgary Tuesday night. Coming off an energetic seven-game series win over Edmonton, things are looking good for L.A. Chris Contos, an unknown in the Hockey World seven games ago, scored his playoff leading and Keem's record eighth goal last night. A little bit of luck never hurts. There was nothing lucky about Kelly Rudy's performance in the Edmonton series. Once again, he proved that he is one of the best goalies in the NHL and a great acquisition by L.A. Then there's the great one, Wayne Gretzky. He's had a Kings club record with 12 points in the Auto Series. Bernie Nichols and company glad to have number 99 on their side as they prepare for the Flames. The second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs will begin tomorrow night. Boston will be in Montreal, while Pittsburgh will host Philadelphia. After taking a brief timeout, we'll move to page three, where spectators watched shots like this during the final round of the LPGA's I-Star Sentinel Classic at Rancho Park here in L.A. And you'll also see an upset in women's tennis as the world's best player was defeated for the first time in 89. Stay with us.